In 1971, the world's first publicly available CPU was released by Intel, and CPUs powered our computers for decades. But our need for better and better graphics was insatiable. And so in 1999, a computer startup named NVIDIA released the world's first publicly available GPU. NVIDIA is now the world's third most valuable company. It's worth more than Amazon and Tesla combined. And NVIDIA GPUs power most of the generative AI systems that we use today, from OpenAI to Runway to Midjourney. And that combination of CPU and GPU has powered our computers for the last two and a half decades. But that literally changed this week. From painting animation to controlling computers with your mind, there are incredible AI updates that you need to know this week. This is your AI film news of the week. There are so many updates that I want to get to this week, but let's kick things off with a really interesting AI video tool that I think you're going to love. It's the magic brush tool inside of Pixverse, and it basically allows you to paint certain areas of your video and then have much more control than some of the other brush tools that we've seen in other applications like Runway. Let me show you what I mean. If you use the motion brush inside of Runway, you know it's really easy to use. All you have to do is upload your image. You can just add the image into the prompt section, go down to motion brush, and then you have the ability to either paint in the subject or you can auto detect areas and select the objects that you want to add in. Once you have the object selected, you have the ability to go in here and change these sliders to basically move the object in certain directions. And this is super helpful for doing everything from water simulations to some basic animations. Now, the problem is you don't have fine tuned control over the movement. You really can only move in certain directions and then add in some ambient noise if you want to kind of add random movements. But what if you actually wanted to control the exact arc of the video that you generated? So here's the example of the video that I generated from Runway. You can see that the balls basically move in one direction. But what if we want that path to be organic and elliptical? Well, that's where Pixverse comes into play. To use Pixverse, just go to their website and go to Get Started in Web. You'll be able to log in and they have a gallery feature where you can check out some of the other videos that have been generated on the platform. Now, all you have to do is go over here to create, and you can simply go to the image section and upload your image. I actually already uploaded this image yesterday, so I'll go ahead and double click. Then all you have to do is upload your image or go to select from assets. I'll go ahead and select this image of these three balls here and click the upload button. So now we have our image in the upload. So to use the brand new magic brush tool, just click on the magic brush section and you can see that it pops up a window that looks very similar to Runway. Now, it's pretty interesting because it does actually have the ability to auto select certain aspects of your frame. You can basically select this and it says sports ball and it selects all three of them. I don't wanna do that though because I wanna select them individually, so I'll deselect that checkbox. So what I'm going to do for brush one, I'm just going to change the size to a little bit bigger and we'll select this first ball here. We'll go to brush two, paint on the second ball, and then we'll go to brush three and paint on the third ball here. Cool. So the interesting thing with this type of magic brush is you actually have the ability to have fine-tuned controls over the movement. So if you click on the draw magic brush direction, you actually have the ability to click and drag the direction of the movement that you're looking to get from the tool. So I'm going to click and drag here and you can see that we can create organic movements. Those lines kind of follow curves that are a little more natural and this is much more helpful if you're working on an animation project. Same is true for this ball. We can just drag and drop and kind of have it move uh, just in a little organic way there. And then the final brush, we can just select this one and let's get real crazy with it. Let's just like go in like a weird circle. There we go. And when you're ready, go ahead and click confirm. And I should note that when you click confirm, you're not saying confirm generate video, you still have to go down here to create. And you have other camera control options. You have the ability to adjust the movement of the camera. You can adjust the zoom. You can adjust the motion strength. I'll change this to, we'll say seven just to increase it. And then you also have the ability to do HD quality, which I recommend to get the best quality possible. And then go ahead and click create. 
Okay, let's take a look at our result here. As you can see, the movement of these balls it definitely is following a very unique path that is not linear. Now, of course, the fidelity, it's kind of turning them into silly putty because we didn't type in a prompt to say that we want it to be more stable, but it did a pretty good job. And especially if you look at the way that the balls are moving, like for example, this ball here, as it traverses throughout the frame, the actual consistency in the texturing is there. So the AI system understands what texturing should be there and it keeps it fairly consistent. There are a few other examples that I wanna show you here. For example, we have this flower that we generated Basically, we wanted to control each individual petal and in the way that the, the middle was able to move when we use the motion brush. And you can see that it creates this really interesting kind of radial movement that uh, looks very good with this organic result. We also have this animation of this spider character and you can see that we were able to animate the arms individually and separate it from the head. Now there's a little bit of bumping there at the end. I actually went and painted uh, just a slight kind of bounce back because I was curious what would happen and it kind of bounced his eyes forward. But you can see that this is pretty interesting. It's cool that you can control multiple arms with multiple movements at the same time. Now, is the tool perfect? No, and I think one good example of that is this generation that we have here. Basically, I painted on the fingers individually and wanted them to kind of close, kind of as this like animated hand character. And you can see that the, the finger just kind of morphs into the other finger and then the back, his, uh, his little hand butt here turns into uh, just an additional finger for some reason. Maybe it's a tail or something. Uh, so as you can see, it's not perfect, but it's actually pretty interesting. And I think that especially if you are looking for organic movements from a motion brush, Pixburs might be a better tool to use. Now, we don't take sponsorships here at Curious Refuge, but Pixburs was wanting to give something back to the community. So they offered three one-year licenses to their tool for free to anybody watching this video. All you have to do is leave a comment below this video with a link to an AI project that you've worked on in the last three months. We will randomly give away these subscriptions to three people in the comments. It was also a very big week for OpenAI. A report came out that said that whenever OpenAI released ChatGPT 4.0, their profits basically doubled overnight, which is incredible. A lot of those subscriptions came directly through the App Store, which is a more user-friendly way of integrating with ChatGPT. And in even bigger news, OpenAI signed a deal with Apple, and that partnership has huge implications for the future. It's basically rumored that ChatGPT will be integrated into iOS 18 this fall. Apple is having their worldwide development conference in about a month, so we will see what the big software announcements will be. Apple is hoping to make the AI processes compute directly on the device, so you don't have to be connected to the cloud. Now, there will be AI processes that go to the cloud, probably for more advanced generations or queries, but for the most part, the AI system will be native on the phone. And they're really calling this AI system proactive intelligence. So for example, the AI will be used to summarize notifications on your phone. It can create synopses of news articles. It can transcribe voice memos. It can auto-populate your calendar with messages that you've received and it will have AI photo editing tools like the ones that we've seen in other high-end software like Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. Not to be outdone, Microsoft released a brand new line of computers called Copilot Plus AI PCs. Basically, these computers have a brand new chip called an NPU, a neural processing unit, specifically designed for AI operations. Now, this NPU basically allows you to do all sorts of really interesting things. It's, of course, faster at generating most language model requests. It also has the ability to generate images in basically real time, and it will be able to translate audio with live captions in over 40 languages. Microsoft is accepting pre-orders for these computers starting on June 18th. And that's not even the biggest news. The biggest news from this announcement is the way in which the operating system works. Basically, these AI computers will record everything that happens on your screen and allow you to ask questions about anything you've done on your computer. 
So for example, if you got a message a few weeks ago and you don't remember where that message is or what it said, you can ask the AI system and it will be able to tell you information through a language model chat interface. Now, my initial thought is that this computer was going to use a ton of power and it would be very challenging for it to do these operations continually. But Microsoft is actually saying that the battery will outperform a MacBook Air by 58% and that the language models running through the NPU processor will be 20 to 100 times more efficient than the current models that use GPUs. In a way, Microsoft is giving your computer photographic memory. It will remember everything that happens on your screen. Now, of course, there are privacy concerns, so you should note that at any point, you can pause the memory feature and it will not remember what is on your screen. But there's also some other AI tools that will be available in these Microsoft tools. For example, you will have the ability to use Microsoft Paint and then Generative AI to generate more realistic images, which is really cool. And they actually said that they will be working with Adobe to slowly release the Creative Cloud onto these PCs. So it sounds like because of the new processing unit, they will need to rewrite code and make sure that these applications are ready to go on these new tools. They also said that DaVinci Resolve Studio will be able to use the new NPU to perform some various tasks that require machine learning, for example, using a magic mask in your color grading workflow. We were lucky enough to sit down with the Microsoft team a couple of weeks ago in France, and we've been very impressed by their innovation and push into the future of productivity using AI. In music news, Suno version 4 is just around the corner. But to give us a taste of what that new system may look like, Suno released 3.5 in early access to users that have the pro model of their tool. The 3.5 model will allow you to generate songs that are up to four minutes long, they are better quality and you have the ability to extend songs for up to two minutes. Now, having a four minute long song directly from a prompt allows you to create a full song in a single prompt. To use this new feature, just go over to the Suno website, go to create, and then you can type in the description of your song. For our example, I'm going to say an electronic synth pop song about a YouTube show called AI Film News by Curious Refuge. And in the drop down menu, as long as you are a pro subscriber or higher, you can click on 3.5 early access and then click create. I have a quick result that I generated recently. Let's go ahead and click play. Okay, kind of a banger. Maybe we need to make it the theme song of the show. Suno also released a demo of a brand new feature that allows you to take just random sound effects from your life and turn them into songs. So they have this example of a watering can. Let's take a listen. So this tool is not available just yet, so we can't play around with it, but it is really interesting to think that, you know, usually when you're in the process of trying to put together a song, you typically will use sound effects in your voice to come up with certain aspects of the way in which you want the song to sound, but using AI tools, you can basically upscale those in the same way that you would upscale an image. What I also know is that investors are loving Suno right now. They actually raised $125 million in funding, and their valuation is at half a billion dollars, which makes them technically more valuable than every single one of the Foo Fighters combined. I also came across a video that was really interesting. Basically, it is a concept for an AI surgery system that allows you to transplant heads onto another body. It's uh, kind of just like a fun little black mirror use case where people are just showing what the concept could be like. But what I thought was so interesting is people actually thought that that was a real product release. And I think it really does showcase that we are in the middle of one of the biggest hype cycles in history. Obviously, AI is going to transform the way in which we do everything, especially the work that we do on machines. 
But the fact that people think that you can just transplant a head right now is pretty amazing. And I think it does speak a lot to the market evaluation of AI companies like NVIDIA being more valuable than the entirety of Amazon and Tesla combined. In Hollywood, Meta and Google have been meeting with studios to look for training data that they can use to train their AI video models. Now, they've chatted with a lot of different studios and it seems like Warner is actually looking to license part of their catalog to these companies. Disney and Netflix have specifically said that they do not want these companies to train on their data. And while we're talking about Google, I came across a few really funny examples of their new AI search feature messing up horribly. So if you've used Google in the last two weeks, then you know that if you type in a search, you're going to get an AI search result at the very top. Now, these search results, unfortunately, were trained on basically the entirety of the internet and it seems like Google's algorithm does not understand sarcasm. And so it's been putting sarcastic results from comments inside of tools like Reddit in those AI generations. For example, their AI system has said that Neil Armstrong met with cats on the moon. It's saying that geologists at Berkeley recommend eating one small rock every single day. And it also said that if you want your cheese on your pizza to be a little more tacky, just add in some glue. And in non-surprising gross internet news, someone actually tried the glue pizza and you can read the article over on Business Insider. I think it's really interesting that these AI innovations are forcing large companies to release models that they normally would not have released without thorough testing. It seems like AI companies are really using the public release as the beta test, as opposed to waiting in a black box and testing these things over and over again before they push them out to the masses. Canva also hosted their Canva Create 2024 conference where they announced a ton of brand new features to their suite. Now there's a ton of features that are helpful for day-to-day -day design work, but more specifically, there are some AI tools that look really interesting and I want to show you them today. The first is text to graphic. To use text to graphic, just go to a Canva window go to elements and then go down to generate your own and click graphics. So in here we can say anything we want. Let's say a cat eating an egg roll and you can select the style that you want. They have different styles here. I'll select sticker and go ahead and generate the graphic. And we have three different results here. I don't know what was going on in result number four, but it didn't meet the criteria. And I like this first one. So we'll go ahead and click on it and you can see that it pops it up into our frame. So there you go, we have a cat eating an egg roll. Now I wanted to compare this result with the result from Mid Journey, and uh, I basically said an illustrated sticker of a cat holding an egg roll, and you can see that Mid Journey has no idea what an egg roll looks like. It basically wants to create an egg. So I guess this one is kind of an egg roll, but not exactly, and the cat is missing its arm. They also announced a new feature called Magic Switch, where basically you have the ability to transform one design into a different design. So Canva's big initiative is they want to become a document tool like Google Docs. And you basically using this tool can convert things from a whiteboard experience into a document with just a few mouse clicks. You also have the ability to train their AI system on your voice so you can convert text into a style that is similar to the way that you write. Now, I was very skeptical of this feature, and so I wanted to test it out. So here's what I did. So here is a two sentence explanation from Wikipedia about the genesis of Epcot. So the genesis for Epcot was originally conceived as a utopian city of the future by Walt Disney in the 1960s. The concept was an acronym for Experimental Prototype City of Tomorrow, often interchanging city and community. Okay, so. That is the raw text from Wikipedia. Now, I was curious, what if I trained the AI system to write like me, how would it write that same sentence? Now to do that, all you have to do is select the text, go to magic write, go down to change voice, and we will do add a new voice. Now, you need to paste in your sample text here. I'll just paste this in. And when you do that, you can click analyze voice and it will interpret what your vocal style is like. So here is the style that it generated for me. It says, your writing is reflective, focusing on personal stories and lessons learned. It is humorous and lighthearted, incorporating subtle jokes and playful comments. The narrative is personal and engaging, often using a first-person perspective. 
Okay, great. So let's give this voice a name. We'll say my voice and go ahead and click save. So now I want to convert this text. In order to do it, just click on it, go to magic right. We'll go to change voice and we will select my voice. Now, before I read the AI version of my voice, I want to read you what I actually wrote. So here's what I said. The idea for Epcot was first imagined by Walt Disney in the 1960s. Walt dreamed of a utopian city formerly known as the experimental prototype community of tomorrow or Epcot for short. Okay, so you can see that it is to the point, concise, and there's some language in there to make it just a little bit softer than the Wikipedia article. And here's that same paragraph written as Canva impersonating me. Did you know that Epcot, that beloved theme park, was originally the brainchild of Walt Disney himself? back in the swinging 60s? Picture this, a utopian city of the future sparked from Walt's imagination, an experimental prototype community of tomorrow, or Epcot for short. Did you catch that? Community, not city. Although the two words often swap places in the name. Fascinating, isn't it? Okay, so this is definitely giving Steve Buscemi on SNL, how do you do fellow kids? Uh, I don't think that this did a very good job, but you can see that it did incorporate some things that are similar to what I would write. So for example, it said experimental prototype community of tomorrow or Epcot for short. I actually said the exact same thing or Epcot for short. So it is interesting to see that there are some parts that are working well and then other parts that just completely miss the mark. They also have some AI video editing tools that they announced that really laid down a prototype for what the future of video editing looks like in professional applications. For example, we have this video of this pirate scene that we put together. It's basically a bunch of just different shots of kind of pirate motifs compiled into a single video. Now, what if we wanted the AI system to actually edit this video automatically? It's pretty interesting. All you have to do is go to edit video and you can go to the highlights button. So very quickly, Canva will actually break this scene into smaller sub scenes. So you can see that it has this clip here that says stormy seas, and it basically is all the clips that have the seas. It also has ship at sunset, so it looks pretty good. Uh, intense moments on the deck, it has the shots of the characters, and then we have shots of the, the ship shooting, and then we have the quiet village at the end. Now, this tool is not perfect, so I definitely don't recommend using this tool for most editing, I think you're much better off using professional tools like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, but it does lay down a framework for how the future of editing might be, especially with more AI video editing systems releasing all the time. One of the problems that I see here is it actually kind of cuts scenes off before it gets to the shot. So for example, we have this shot of a ship at sunset. You can see it ends with this man looking at the camera. And then when we cut to the next shot, it still begins with the man looking at the camera. So it really should have cut right at the cut point. Uh, so it seems like it's kind of lumping things together in a way that is not quite logical to the way in which an editor might think. They also released an AI voice quality enhancement feature that allows you to remove background noise and just improve the overall quality of the voices. So I have this quick clip from a previous video. Let's go ahead and play it back. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of AI Film News. We'd like to extend a huge thank you to Microsoft, Can, and Can Next for having us at this amazing festival. Okay, so as you can hear, there's quite a bit of background noise and there's also a smudge on the lens because we literally shot this when it was raining outside. Now, if you want to enhance the audio, all you have to do is click on the video, go to the audio button and click enhance voice. So let's go ahead and play this back. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of AI Film News. We'd like to extend a huge thank you to Microsoft, Can, and Can Next for having us at this amazing festival. Okay, so the quality isn't necessarily silver screen ready, but for most social and online videos, it does a pretty good job. Now, our favorite tool to use is the Adobe Podcast Enhance tool for enhancing our voices. I did a quick comparison. Let me go ahead and play that back so you can hear the difference. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of AI Film News. We'd like to extend a huge thank you to Microsoft, Can, and Can Next for having us at this amazing festival. So as you can see, the quality is better using the Adobe Enhance tool. And I like using this tool because you have the ability to dial in the strength. So if you want it to be uh, more isolating, you can dial it up. But a lot of times we'll keep it at, you know, around like 70% so that we can have some of the background noise just to give the audio a sense of place. It's usually kind of weird if you just 
totally isolate the audio. And unfortunately, using the Canva tool, you only have the ability to enhance the voice or not enhance the voice. You don't have the ability to dial it in. So in most cases, I would say use the Adobe Podcast Enhance feature. It's actually directly inside of Premiere Pro. You don't actually have to use the online version of that tool anymore. There have also been quite a few really interesting white papers that have been released this last week. Let's take a look at a few of our favorite. The first one that I want to talk about is Mirror Gaussian. So a Gaussian splat, whenever you take a look at the scan, it typically does not do a good job with reflections. Well, that's where Mirror Gaussian comes into play. Mirror Gaussian allows you to basically put mirrors into your Gaussian splats and it looks at the environment and basically will create very realistic mirroring using the tool. And it basically is rendering in real time as well. It renders at 150 frames per second. And whenever you're able to dial this in, because obviously this is reflections at like 100%, but if you're able to dial it into certain amounts and basically convert this into a reflective texture, it will make Gaussian splats look much more realistic. A team also came out with a tool called Semantic Gesticulator, <laughs> which is a great name. And it basically allows you to animate a character using just text. So we've seen tools like this from Facebook, and now we have one that's specifically designed for 3D animation. So let's go ahead and play a quick result. The most annoying animal in the animal kingdom, without a doubt, is the beaver because it just chews on things and it creates dams and it stops water. It's just making a mess. So the thing that makes this tool really interesting is that it's focusing on smaller details. So they basically have trained it on 200 different types of nonverbal hand gestures that give it an extra level of personality beyond what other automatic animation tools we've seen at this point in time. Now, is this tool production ready? Absolutely not, but I think it really does pave the way for future automatically generated characters in the very near future. In the world of accessibility, there was a white paper called Signs LLM that came out that basically converts text into sign language. So it's really cool because basically it converts an image into an animated sign language experience. And it also has the lip sync as well. So this of course has big implications for the future of accessibility. And I think whenever this tool is paired with real-time tools, it will be awesome to have live real-time generated sign language for basically any program in the world. We also came across a really interesting tool that is going to lay the framework for the future of visual effects. Basically, the tool allows you to upload video and then it creates three things. The first thing it creates is a Gaussian splat of the environment. The second thing is it creates an animated character with tracked movement. And the third, is it actually creates a 3D camera that moves around in 3D space. So with all of this information, you can begin to basically reverse engineer the scene and hypothetically, you would be able to make edits to it in post. Now, again, this tool is not perfect at all either. Some of the character tracking kind of comes across more like uh, whenever a Tesla sees a person, it creates this like very rudimentary 3D version of a person. But you can see that when this tool is paired with 3D applications and visual effects software, it could change the way that we edit our stories in the future. The team at Adobe also released the ability to do generative remove inside of Adobe Lightroom. So it's very similar to generative fill in Photoshop. Basically, all you have to do is select an area that you want to remove, click the generate button and it will remove it from the scene. Now this is in early access, so it's not available to everyone just yet. And I should note that the quality of the generated area is typically lower quality than the image that you uploaded. So always be mindful whenever you're working with generative fill in Photoshop or in Lightroom to make sure that the fidelity and the resolution of the generated areas matches your image. XAI also has raised six billion dollars to build a mega factory powered by a hundred thousand nvidia gpus so elon basically got funding from anderson horowitz sequoia capital and a saudi prince to basically put together a factory that will be in competition with OpenAI. 
The team at Leonardo also released Image Generation version 2 that basically has more realistic images than the previous model. Let me show you how to use it. Just go to the Leonardo website and go ahead and click Get Started. Then you can go to Image Generation and you can type in your prompt. We'll say a cinematic still of a woman in a sci-fi film. Now, by default, it should be in image generation version 2. You can also click legacy mode if you want to use some of the previous iterations. And there's all sorts of different presets that you can use. I'll use the cinematic Kino preset, and let's go ahead and click generate. Okay, so we have these images that were generated here. You can see most of them look pretty similar, kind of feel like they're from the same sci-fi film generally. And Leonardo is also really interesting because whenever you create a generation, it typically will try to replicate the same character in all four of the images. Uh, the character is a little different, but for the most part, it's consistent here. And it looks pretty darn good. You know, if we pull this up here, you can see that, you know, it really does look like a still from a film. It even has some of that film grain and texturing uh, that makes it look uh, pretty darn realistic. I think at a quick glance, you would never know, for example, that this image uh, was fake. And this image looks really great too, just seems like, uh, you know, a still from like a sci-fi Western film. Now, of course, I wanted to compare this with Midjourney so that you can know which image generation tool produces the best results. So first up, we have this image of a cinematic still of a beautiful alien landscape with waterfalls and orange hippos. So on the left, we have Leonardo. On the right, we have Midjourney. And I think without a doubt, the Leonardo image is much better. And not only that, it's also closer to the prompt that we typed in. The one on the right here, I'm not too sure what these characters are. I don't think that's a hippo. That looks like a water buffalo or something uh, <laughs> in the water. And the overall cinematic quality of Midjourney for this specific image was much worse than the image created in Leonardo. We also have this film noir scene of a 1940s film shot in Tokyo. And I think they both look really interesting in their own unique way. The one on the left, I'd say, looks a little more realistic. The one on the right is a little more stylized and a little more over the top when it comes to the color grading, but both look really interesting. And finally, we have a cinematic still of a battle between knights and dragons in New York City. And the Leonardo scene on the left looks like a guy is fighting a knight mixed with the dragon, but it does look like a realistic photo, I suppose. The one on the right looks highly stylized and cinematic, almost like concept art, but it is, I'd say, much more cinematically interesting. So again, I think it's a tie. I think this is really interesting because Leonardo is great because you have the ability to generate images and video and do so many other interesting things directly in their single tool. You actually don't have to go over to a standalone application to generate the images. So for me personally, I'm going to continue to use Midjourney for most of my primary generations, but Leonardo is a fantastic alternative if you want to use a single tool. Leonardo also came out with the ability to create consistent characters, which is really interesting. So in order to create a consistent character, just go to the image generation button and click character reference. Now I'm going to go ahead and select a picture of me here and click confirm. So now we'll say a cinematic still of a man in a sci-fi film. Let's see what we get. This is the first one. It's close. Maybe the hair is like a little lighter. Uh, the face doesn't seem quite right. Uh, same thing here, definitely not me. Uh, but it's close, right? It's it's pretty close. So I think you could do maybe some face swapping to get it uh, pretty darn close. But, uh, you know, for the most part, I'd say it's about 80% of the way there. We also opened up an enrollment for the June session of our AI filmmaking and AI advertising workshop. This is going to be one of the biggest updates ever to our program. We're going to have more live sessions and talk about some of the latest tools that have come out in just the last few weeks. Dave and I will share some of the techniques and processes that we shared at the Cannes International Film Festival with you inside of the program. Enrollment is now open. You can click the link below to learn more. We also came across an interesting video that basically is doing video to video face swapping on a 4090 Ti GPU. Uh, this is really interesting, one, for the implications that this could have with misinformation, but two, also being able to use this type of real-time face swapping technology has already been used on Hollywood sets with tools like metaphysics. 
but having the ability to do this locally on your own machine, especially as the quality increases and gets better and better, means that there may be a future in the very near future where you can actually change your actor's face to any character and get direct real-time feedback as you record. We also came across a really interesting tool that allows you to scan an environment and then that environment can completely change. For example, in the video, they scanned basically the sewer system where some plumbing was going and then they filled it over with concrete. But the interesting thing is you're able to use the AI tool and the AR experience to go back to that location and see through the ground. It's basically like having Superman 3D vision on your phone. It's really interesting to think about how this technology could be paired with AI documentaries or 3D representations of your world to tell new stories. I should also note that our AI film trailer competition ends on June 6th. If you want to enter in the AI trailer competition for your shot at winning an Apple Vision Pro provided by Submachine, you still have time to submit your trailer. We have over 160 submissions at this time and we'd love to see your project. I also want to extend a huge thank you to the Curious Refuge community around the world. We actually just hosted our London meetup and it looked really awesome. Shelby and I were able to host a very quick meetup in Copenhagen at a Texas barbecue place in the middle of Denmark. Who would have known? And then we also have our AI meetup in Kansas City happening today as I record this video. If you want to host an AI filmmaking meetup, be sure to hit us up at hello at curiousrefuge.com. We'd love to establish more local pockets of AI storytellers around the world. And while I'm talking about around the world, I should note that there are a ton of really interesting AI events popping up. From Paris to Glendale to Barcelona, Amsterdam, Seoul, there are AI events all over the place. You can check out the AI events page over on Curious Refuge to see if there's an event happening near you. And that brings us to our AI film news of the week. So the first film that I want to highlight is called Re-In. It was a film that I came across and it had some of the best curation and editing that I've ever seen in an AI project. And I think it really showcased what good editing and storytelling can be like if you work around some of the limitations with AI. And I was like, who put together this incredible project? And I looked and of course it was Dave Clark. <laughs> Uh, so great work on this project, Dave. And Dave actually worked on a project in collaboration with Don Allen Stevenson, who uh, Shelby actually was on a panel with back at the Cog X event in LA. Long story short, they showcase what you can do with the new Simulon app that we talked about a few weeks ago. And it's one of the cooler projects that I've seen using this technology. The next film that I want to highlight is called The Belly Conspiracy by Dorothy Schrodinger. It's basically creepy as heck, and it uses some really good color grading to work around some of the AI limitations. It has so many weird and imaginative shots, and I think they did a great job at integrating live action footage with the AI video. The next project that I want to highlight is an AI advertising student's assignment. Uh, the student's name is Renee Seuss. They consistently create some really awesome projects inside of the program. It's basically a BMW spec ad that looks great. It has some really incredible shots that have a really dynamic movement. And I think it's a great example of what a spec project can be like. And the last film that I want to highlight is called The Unexpected by the one and only Jeff Synthesize. Jeff is an innovator when it comes to AI video and he used a mixture of live action and AI to create a film that I don't want to spoil the ending, but let's just say that it's uh, a bit more of an advertisement than a traditional film. I think he did a really great job at integrating 3D assets and 2D video plates into the AI generations to help them feel a little more real. It goes totally off the rails at the end, so I definitely recommend checking it out. And the final story that I want to talk about is having the ability to control a computer with your mind. The team at Neuralink basically put a microchip inside of a man named Noland Arbaugh's brain 
that allows him to control a computer with his mind. Now, Nolan was rendered paralyzed in a swimming accident, and he talked about how for years he was super depressed because he felt like he couldn't do a lot and wasn't able to contribute. But using Neuralink, he was able to control a computer with his mind. So it directly integrates with a MacBook and has an application. And so through a process of body mapping, he is now able to control that computer and do any task that you would need to do on a computer. It's an incredible story, and I think we're only scratching the surface of what might be possible in the very near future using AI and medicine. Thank you so much for watching this episode of AI Film News. Of course, if you want to join us for our AI advertising or AI filmmaking workshop, you can click the link below to join us. We would love to have you inside of the program. You can subscribe to get AI Film News delivered directly to your inbox over at CuriousRefuge.com. And like and subscribe here on YouTube if you want to get the latest AI tutorials and news directly on the platform. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. We'll see you next time.